The club meeting goes as normal. I choose to walk up to Yuri, and she honestly has me curious about her book. Hey, Yuri. Abrupt change of music? Hello there, how can I be of assistance? Well, I did some thinking, and I was wondering if you could tell me more about this book, Meditations, right? I would be delighted to. In fact... Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a different book. It's much thicker than the other one. My eyes widen a little. Did you bring that book just for today? Yes and no. This is my personal copy of the book. I always keep it with me. I see. So what can you show me? Let's start with this. Hmm? We read for a little bit. She looks back up at me, to re er, ready to ask me a question. Suppose you ride your bike to school and get a flat tire. What do you do? I get the tire replaced after school. Alright. Now imagine a week later you get a flat tire again. I would get it replaced again. You could. However, you don't have unlimited funds. So what's something else you could do to prevent it from happening a third time? Uh, I don't know, pay attention to where you're biking? I could take a different route to school. Maybe inspect my bike a bit further. Exactly. So, is the point to always think logically? Not at all. Your emotions are still important, but you should always keep them in check. Going back to our bike example, if you cared too little, then you wouldn't get the bike taken care of. If you cared too much, your judgment would be clouded, and you wouldn't be able to find a solution. Do you see what I'm getting at? I believe I do now. Yesterday, I asked you to consider what it could mean to love your fate. Do you have any thoughts on that? I didn't give it much thought. I had a pile of homework to do. That's fine. We can just pick up where we left off yesterday. Loving your fate simply means to accept the outcome as it is. We humans have a deep-seated need to control our lives, and yet there are some things always out of our control. The best way to combat this is to detach yourself from the desired outcome and to expect it to never come. So that if it never does come, you won't be as disappointed. So just don't give a shit? Well, I wouldn't put it like that. Yes, put your feelings aside. But don't allow yourself to become nihilistic. You can still have goals and ambitions, perhaps just not dreams. Think of it like being an uncompromising, or uncompromising yes-sayer to life. I don't think I follow, but I can always learn more. Of course. I strongly suggest finding a copy of the book. You may also be able to find it online. I see. Mary closes the book and places it back in her bag. You can always go for a bit longer if you would like. I think I've had my fill for the day. But I really appreciate this, Yuri. As if on cue, Sayori walks up to me. Hey, do you want to walk with Natsuki and I? We're all heading to the same place anyway. Actually, I'm going to stop by the library. There's something I want to look at. Is it that armor fanny thing? I'm really curious about it, Sayori. They didn't actually mention the title of the mod yet so far, did they? Maybe I'll share it with you, who knows. Well, you have fun with that. Yeah. See you two later, then. These walks are so different without Sayori, but I'm glad she's out doing something. It beats vegetating in her room, so I have nothing but happiness for her. The only person I'm disappointed in is myself. How could I not bring myself to confront her depression directly? I was right there! Take a deep breath, try to follow Yuri's advice. There has to be a lesson to learn from this. Maybe now wasn't the time. Maybe when she's more comfortable. But what, uh, uh, but what will she be more or be comfortable? Mm. I need to try not to worry so much about tomorrow. As I continue my commute to the library, I notice someone familiar. What's Monica doing out here? Is she on her way home? I feel like I shouldn't say hi. But we are clubmates, so it seems okay. Monica? Hallie! What brings you this way? I was on my way to the bookstore. And you? Well, I was on my way to church. On a Wednesday? Well, I have Bible study today. Think of it like a second literature club. Well, then we focus on one book. Oh. Care to join me? No thanks, I was on my way to the library. I see. Are you reading more of that armor fatty stuff? Nosy much? Hey, you seem pretty engaged with Yuri, so I could only assume. I didn't mean to be nosy. I'm sorry, I shouldn't take up any more of your time. I'll see you tomorrow. You too, Monica. We went our separate ways. Yeah, one way this mod departs from canon ever so slightly is that Monica is um, a Christian. For, for reasons. I think it's for thematic reasons, so I wanted to like give it us past even though like in Act 3 we learned the Monica's an atheist basically. All that fun stuff from OG. You know how it is. We went our separate ways. I finally reached the library and walked inside. 
How can I help you? I'm looking for a book. Which book in particular? It's called Meditations by Marcus something. I know which one you're looking for. Really? But unfortunately, we don't have that book in stock. Of course. All right. Maybe there's something else I can do. Do you have any books that are similar? What are you looking for in particular? Because I have several books on stoicism. Do you have anything on Amor Fati? I have one book that might help. The librarian led me to a small section of the library. She picked up what seemed to be a really old book. The cover read The Gay Science. My hands tingled as I held it in my hands. I could feel the book calling to me in some strange way. I'm led back to the front and I check out the book. I sit down at the nearest table eagerly waiting to read. And I don't quite understand what I'm reading. Nothing here makes sense. It feels alien. <sighs> I'll ask Yuri about it tomorrow. She knows more than I do. I'm getting late anyway. It's getting late anyway. I crash on my bed, leaving my book on the nightstand. Today was another worthwhile day. I'm ready to see what tomorrow has in store. Another day, another club meeting. I hope things go better than last time. They didn't go too bad last time. You mean last, like, last uh, passive this week? I open the door to the club room and walk in. Hello. Hi, Holly. How was your evening with Natsuki? Great. Except we didn't get to talk about anything fun. I never knew she was such a strict cook. She said we couldn't even start baking until we had a tray to put them in. I'm sure there is a reason for it. You're damn right there is. It's called having everything in its place for a reason. Any self-respecting chef would tell you to have all your ducks in a line before doing anything. I thought I told you that. You did. I just forgot. Do you ever listen? Aren't you being a bit harsh, Natsuki? You should at least give her some credit for making a conscious effort to learn. Besides, it was your idea to offer lessons. Well, it was your idea to ask us to help her out. Help me out with what? Help you out with your... Your cooking skills! You are going to college soon, and since your current skills are lacking, I figured why not get you some help. Howie! Is there something you're not telling me? It feels like I'm being left out of something. There's nothing being hidden from you. Holly, you've been acting strange since this Tuesday. What's going on? Stay calm, Holly. Just explain it to her. A little white lie never hurt anyone, except when it does. Sarah, I've known you for many years. We're as close as siblings. If there was something going on, you would be the first to know. And how come I'm not the first to know? Why don't you want me to know? It's a surprise for the festival. You like surprises, don't you? I do, but what does it have to do with me learning how to cook? I, you know, I don't think... I'm at a loss for words right now. I can't weasel my way out of this. I forgot how persistent Sayori can be. I look over at Monica and Mouth, help me in her direction. Surprisingly, she gets the hint and walks over me. Hey, Sayori, I need to talk to you about a few things. Sayori is still mad. It's club related. Huh? What is it? It's presidential stuff. I can't say it out loud. Mm, all right. Sayori leaves with Monica and I am on my own again. I really owe Monica one. Seeing as I have some time now, I decide to walk over to Yuri. Hey, Yuri. Yes, Holly? Have you heard of the book called The Gay Science? I am familiar with that book, yes. Were you able to understand it? I'm confused. I have no idea what I'm reading. The words feel like they're passing right through me. How much did you read, if I may ask? I spent hours reading through the pages. I see now. I see what the issue is. What is it? Philosophy is much different in how you take it in. You can't just aimlessly read a book like this and learn something. You have to put a lot of care and attention to what's being read. I'll show you. Do you have the book with you? No. I left it on my nightstand. Damn it, I should have brought it with me. I can work with this. Yuri pulls out a notebook and begins writing something down. In a few moments, she shows me what she wrote. This. This is the only thing I can remember. And you wrote it down word for word. It's no different than a Christian reciting a Bible verse. You really like that metaphor, don't you? I prefer not to get distracted. Now follow along with me. Hmm? Did it say something else there? No, I'm, I'm, I'm just crazy. You don't mind me. All right. CJ. Now, as I mentioned before, you can't read it all at once and expect to understand it all at once. You have to learn to see what you are looking at. 
which means taking in what you read slowly and breaking it down into more manageable parts that you can then combine to form the complete whole. So you're going to break it down and explain it like my English teacher? In a manner of speaking, yes. Anyway, let us look to where it says, I do not want to wage war against what is ugly. I do not want to accuse. I do not even want to accuse those who accuse. What do you think it's trying to say? Hmm, that the speaker doesn't want to accuse the accusers? Go on. Hmm, if I were to go back to our previous lesson on Stoicism, I would say that a Stoic would use Amor Fati, and therefore wouldn't discriminate in any manner. A perfectly acceptable, a perfectly acceptable argument, yes. What else do you see? When it talks about waging war against what is ugly, I can only imagine accepting the horrible situations in life for what they are. I'm starting to get it now. Right. Why don't we look at another part? When I read, I want to learn more and more to see as beautiful what is necessary in things, then I shall be one of those who makes things beautiful. I always imagine it as being a pure suit of knowledge, but not just what you learn in books, but also what you experience. What you've seen, heard, and felt, anger, joy, and sorrow, and so on. But the point is not er, to not just learn, but to also teach. To make something new from that or what has been learned. Or that's how I choose to view it. I can't say I disagree with you, but compared to you, I'm so lost and dense. I don't think I'll ever be able to keep up. Don't say that. It took me years to fully understand what I'm reading here. Knowledge is easy to obtain. The wisdom to use that knowledge, however, is something that takes years, if not a lifetime, to learn. Well, I think there's someone who would benefit from all of this more than me. Who, Sayori? Yeah, you mentioned you were in a similar situation to her own. I think it would be of great help to her. You make a good point. It's strange to think I've come full circle. Huh? I'll save this story for another time. In the meantime, I'll talk to Sayori tonight, but so should you at one point. She is your friend as well. And when you do read, try not to read it so linearly. Try to dissect it. Find the meaning in it. Ask questions and then try to answer them. I will. Thanks, Yuri. I'll leave the club and go about my commute. Only, Siori isn't here. She must have gone tired of waiting on me. Or maybe she's angry at me. I can understand why. I just wish it didn't have to be so hard to do this. I hope I can get things right tomorrow. I quietly head home. I pick the book up from my nightstand and begin skimming through it until I find a familiar excerpt. How did she write this one word for word? It still boggles me how much she knows. Even with her advice, I still can't wrap my head around what I'm reading. I read a little further down until my eyes catch on to something. There will be nothing new in it, but every pain and every joy and every thought and sigh and everything unutterably small or great in your life will have to return to you, all in the same succession and sequence. My heart stops for a moment. I close the book and toss it back on the nightstand. What was that? Something about that rubs me the wrong way. And I don't want to find out what it is. Maybe some stones are left unturned. That's enough reading for one night. Today's Friday. Of all days, I would expect Sayori to be up and about already. She'd ask why I'm not up yet. Or that would be our normal Friday. I get ready for school and head over to her house. Given the way things have been, and knowing about her depression, I can already tell she won't be as cheery as she used to be. But nonetheless, I have to face it. I knock on her door. Nothing. I knock harder. Still nothing. This is a familiar scenario. I sigh and let myself into her house. Why do I have to wake her up in her own home? Sayori, it's time for school! She's nowhere to be found, of course. I walk up to Sayori's room and bang on her door. I hear a groan and then shuffling bedsheets. And then... Snoring. I breathe a sigh of relief. I open the door to her room and walk in. I walk up to her bed and shake her body. I see her eyes open up. She looks deathly tired. Theory. Mm. It's time for school. Mm. Hmm. I'll make you breakfast. Theory mm. slowly drags herself off her bed. You look really tired. How late did you stay up last night? I take the hint to leave her room to let her get ready for school. I head down to the kitchen to look for something to make. I see a box of pancake mix in the pantry. I follow the instructions and cook accordingly. Sayori wakes up a bit more and comes to life as she enters the kitchen. Good morning, Sayori! 
Why are you cooking me breakfast? I said I was going to. Besides, you need something in your stomach. You didn't have to, though. You're too nice, Hallie. It's what friends are for. So feel free to grab a plate. Suri comes to the kitchen and fixes herself a plate. She took a few bites out of the pancakes. Your cooking is terrible, as always. For terrible food, you sure eat a lot of it. I'm hungry and tired, okay? Alright. Why are you so tired, anyway? Oh, Harry wanted to talk. She kept me up till four in the morning. She just talking about feelings and stress and school and depression. And depression. Wait, did... Yeah, it's... It already said and depression. And depression and depression. Depression. Wait. Hallie! Is this what you were hiding from me? Sorry. It had to come out at some point. Yes. You know about your depression, Sayori. Why? Why did you have to go behind my back? I was worried about you. And I know I couldn't help you alone. They're your friends, too. Wouldn't you do the same if someone was in your shoes? I... I would. But why did you have to be all secretive? I just thought... I just thought it would be better if you knew you weren't alone. To know that people do love and care for you. Your depression isn't just an obstacle. In some way, you could consider it a test. Getting past it can and will help shape you into a better Sayori for tomorrow. You say it like it's a good thing. It's not! It's the worst thing I could ever feel! It's so painful! It hurts every time I think of anything! Let's take a moment to breathe here. Did you and Yuri at least have a productive conversation? Sierra took a moment to collect her thoughts. Yeah. I learned about how to deal with the rain clouds, how to fight beauty in life. See, we're just trying to help you. We don't mean any harm to you. Thank you, Hallie. Sierra finishes her meal and puts it in the sink, taking my plate with her. I'll be out in a few minutes. I just need to wash these dishes. I let Sierra be and wait by the front. I can hear dishes clattering and water running in the background. I also hear a sharp pain as if she were breathing through her teeth. I pass it off after two hours of sleep and hot water. Or I think I would have, if it wasn't taking so long. It doesn't take ten minutes to clean a few dishes. I just had to go check up on her. Hey, Sari, what's taking so- I find her holding a knife to her wrists as blood drips down from her arms. Whoop. There, you can see it from behind the message box. Oh dear. Say, oh no. In a blur, I grab her arms and look into her face. Say, Ori, what the hell were you thinking? I, I was doing what Yuri said I should do. Why in God's name would Yuri suggest you do that? She told me it's what she did when she was stressed out with her emotions. I think Yuri was telling you that she did it and that it was a mistake. Do you really think she would encourage you to do that? Without really realizing, I grip her wrist harder. Don't do that again, Sayori! Alright, I promise I won't do it again! Do you mean it? Yes! Please let go, you're starting to scare me! <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know what came over me. Let's just get this cleaned up. I run warm water on her cuts and patch them up with some bandages and give them a kiss. We were quiet to each other for a few moments after this. Sayori, I know it was a mistake. But promise me you won't do that again. I know there's a lot of emotions going on inside you that I can never understand. But please don't do anything you'll regret. We walk out of her house and go on our way to school. I keep a close eye on her. It's not like her to do such a thing. What if Siori is lying to me? What if this revelation hit her harder than I thought? I'm going to have a talk with Yuri. I should have known this was a bad idea. I enter the club and room and look around. I see Yuri reading her book in her usual spot. I walk over to her and slam my fist on her desk. Ah! Allie, what's gotten into you? We need to talk. Now! What's this about? Am I in trouble? Did I do something wrong? You know exactly what you did wrong! I put my mouth up to her ear and whisper. What did you tell Sayori? I... I... What did you tell Sayori? Allie... Just take a deep breath, please. I didn't mean anything like what you're thinking. Just follow me, and I'll explain everything. Fine. Yuri stands up, and I follow her a few classes down from the club room. 